nation again. If people are studying the hungry and stop the under the tables, God will bless this nation again. If men will start loving their wives and wives will love their husbands, God will bless this nation again. If children will start respecting their parents, if you know children, if you disrespect your parents, if you talk up to your daddy and mama, you shorten your days on this earth. The Bible said the days of the righteous shall be prolonged, but the days of the wicked shall be shortened. That's one way to lengthen your life. And the other way is, it says, honor thy father and mother, that thy days might be long upon this earth. Nobody's going to live very old, or cursing your daddy, or talking up to your mama, or smacking around and back talking your mama or daddy or grandparents. I'm telling you today, friend, God will bless this nation when men will start giving people a dollar for a dollar's worth. God will bless this nation when we'll stop lying, when we'll stop cheating, when we'll stop doing all the ungodly things that this world is doing. Jesus will bless this nation again. I'm telling you, he's the way out of this thing. I, I hope and pray that everything they're doing works. I, I'm praying for it. I pray for that man daily. I pray. I, I do stand against things. But I'm telling you today, I want to see people make it. I want to see this thing straightened out, but I know what it's going to take. It's like taking a pig, washing it, putting a ribbon on it, and spraying some Elizabeth Taylor cologne on it, and putting it in the bed with it. And the next morning, you open the door, and Chris will find the pond, and he'll go with the Elizabeth Taylor uh, uh, cologne, and ribbon, and all that. And he'll crawl that mud, and he'll just, oh, I'm right home now. You know why? Because a whole lot of mud pop. I got a whole lot of mud pop. And the same thing goes with putting a bad thing on what's happening today. It's got to be some repentance. It's got to be some trust in God. It's got to be some people that turn away from things. People start going to church on Sunday like they ought to. You say, well, it's more to it. I'll tell you, let's start somewhere. Don't you think so? Let's just start by going to the house of God. On Sunday morning, Sunday night, Thursday, we got more churches shut down now on Sunday night than we're not going. We're a around here. Did you know that? Hey, people ask me. They come back and say, y'all have church morning in Sunday night. I say, y'all pray on you. Have prayer in room 30. Got Sunday school at 10 45, preaching at 12. Then you're rolling back in there on 7 o'clock. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing, brother. We're seeing people saved and people set free. And we're trying to do like right children and the right thing for God. And I'll tell you this much. If you figure out how much time you spend in church, I dare say we spend seven hours a week in the house of God. And think of how many over 100 and something hours you spend out in that world. We need some fear. We need some love for God. But we also need some fear and reference for God. I want the singers and musicians to come. Listen to what he said. He said, the assembly shall know there's a, there's a God in Israel. And he came and passed through the Philistine arose and came over and drew nigh to meet David. The David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Brother Roger, he was one little boy. One little boy. And you know what he was doing? He ran to their army. He had brothers. Goliath had family down there in that, in that valley. David didn't say, all right, Saul, I'm going to go, but you've got to send 1,500 men to go with you. No, he didn't. David ran to that battle. He took off running by the king. <laughs> he took off running to that battle. You know what he done? He got over and stood right up against that. I was big John Williams at you this morning. I brought him up here, and I looked at him, and he stood up front of him. Amen. He stood him up currently, right? You better work on it. Now this is about the comparison. This is David. I'm blown. <laughs> Would you like to get in the fight with me? I'm blown. I'm blown. Oh, here comes the rest of you. That was terrifying to me. You get my mess with him, then I'm dying. And this is just about the way it looks. Against David and Goliath. I'm serious as I can be, Mike. This is about how it looked. David was about half the size of that mammoth giant. He was so big that that man carried the armor and throw it. Brother Kevin Prince about that in the general assembly. About carrying it back, carrying the, the thing. But here's a little man that says, I'm not trusting in who I am. You look at how big he is. But I'm telling you that on the inside of me is the world's greatest God there is. There ain't no God like it. So you see, when you judge us today, that chances are I could handle you in a fight. I don't know that it could, but thank you. I don't know if I really can handle anything anymore. But you know, you look at that and you judge that and you say, well, that's a lost case right there. That's exactly what Saul and the boys was going to do. 
It's going to send David down for faith. It's going to burn it out that valley. Going out of this beauty. I've been in chariots that have been on fire. But you know what happened? David fooled. But we will eat David fooled. The Bible says David took that swing. Get your swing, David. Load it up. That's the one out of it, man. Get your swing. Bring it down. We've got to bring it. Back. There you go. Now load your rock in. Put your rock in. There you go. Now load it up. Turn it loose. Now hit me with it. <laughs> and he went falling down. You know what happened? Next, old David brought up there, took out his old Goliath sword, and cut his carbon on that head. Cut it all off, took that sword, stuck his head on it, and started back into the camp. That's right. It's really taking that man. Here he comes back into the camp with it. He's got that head. Now I can see all that boy saying, let me carry the head a while, David. Go get your own head. He's got four brothers back there. <laughs> Live out here and say, Little brother, I just want to tell you, I think you're the toughest little guy shuts him out. Go take care of daddy's sheep. Go take care of the sheep. Go take care of the sheep, boy. You make fun of me. Now let me close with this thought today. I don't want nobody to raise your hand and have me in this building this morning. Because the devil told you, God will never use you again. God will never move from you again. God never use you again. And I'm telling you this morning, God spoke to my heart. I'll break those giants down if you'll trust me. If you trust yourself, your wisdom, your knowledge, the giants will defeat you. If you try to figure out a way to get around it, the giants gonna win. But if you put your trust in God and you bury your knees in the ground, you say, God, I can make it, he's gonna help you stand in there. I just couldn't quit this, and I promise you. Nothing that God don't leave my heart. I have to preach what God gave me. Well, I'm going to ask you this morning. Is there a guy that's been standing in your way? You need to feed him. If you will, come on right now.